Hey, folks, as this market tilts towards a correction, a couple of big questions really loom right now. One, will NVDA hang on? Uh, you know, what stocks will actually survive this storm? And here's another, here's another uh, entity that you may want to take a look at that is kind of falling apart. Let's go ahead and see what that is. And of course, that is SMCI. You don't know how many times people have asked me about SMCI. Is it time to buy it? Is it time to buy it? And we're getting an answer today. As you see, SMCI is breaking down. Uh, and it is doing a couple of things that warrant it falling a lot further. One, the the Increased volume as SMCI breaks down, it is breaking, not just breaking kind of the 50-day moving average, but actually plummeting down the, in the 50-day in the, uh, moving average. And so this tech giant just is continuing to, to pull back. This box right here is the magic fib box that I established by, and I'll just grab this really quick. And I'm going to grab hold of that high down to this little swing low right there. And that fills in the box there. And we're already, it's already retraced 50% of this last run where it was almost going uh, hyperbolic, if you will. How far much further will we fall? I don't know at this time. But here's the well about what I'll be looking on uh, uh, SMCI. Look for it to continue to move down. But now that we've broken below the 50-day moving average and the eight-week moving average, I'll look for any kind of a rally attempt back up into the 50-day moving average. Or if my eight-day moving average you see right there, if it breaks down just a little bit more and we get the cross right there, then I'll look for a pullback and, you know, maybe drop a little bit further, maybe down to the bottom of the fib box. Then I, then I will not trade. I will not buy this. That it will not be my buy signal. Uh, if I were in SMCI, I would look for a pullback back into the moving averages. And that's where might be a great idea to get out of a position because what could happen from there is it could drop down and just go splat. So that's what I've got going for SMCI. The other things we're going to be taking a look at today are just as impressive. So let's go ahead and jump over to <laughs> uh, our first slide. And uh, I just want to welcome you everybody to the uh, uh, Trade Your Way to Freedom. And I want to say aloha to Anil. So, Neil, how you how how are you weathering the storm, man? Well, it's tough. Uh, a lot of my stocks have <clears throat> stopped out. Ah, and uh, I'm not in a hurry to buy anything new. Okay. So that's what it is. That's what it is. And so, uh, you know, as this market, I was kind of it just kind of like. It, you know that that movie, The Perfect Storm, uh, where <clears throat> they get caught up out there in a storm in the Atlantic and all that kind of stuff. It almost seems as if the market is rolling into one of those kind of perfect storm type situation. And uh, one of the other things I'm really excited about, Anil is the organizer of the Delaware IBD Meetup Group. He's the developer of the triple screen stock picking system. And he is going to be and with over 33, not 30 decades, three decades of trading experience. The cool thing about it is, is Anil is going to be with us at the Bay Area Moneymakers meeting this coming Tuesday night at five o'clock Pacific time. I'll put some links down in the in the descriptions and an email will be going out to everybody. And Anil, what are you going to be presenting on? That's that's one of the things I I I'm in a constant pursuit to simplify my system. And I have made some new inroads in, in that. Uh, so I will be sharing it all, my part one, part two, part three. It'll be a concise presentation, but it's still it's going to take about 
hour and a half or a little more. Okay, wow. And well, I want to thank you that because I know you're on the East Coast and we're going to start at five o'clock Pacific time. So you know, I want to thank you for, you know, you know, being there till the late hours on the East Coast. So what's the major takeaway you want people to, to you know, why should they be excited to hear you, you know, talk about the, you know, what, what you're doing and what you're discovering? Interesting question. Uh, I'll just give a one-liner tease. Okay. I, I found, found a combination of a couple of indicators that people usually most of the time miss, but they are important. And I'll talk about that, and I'll just keep it at that. <laughs> okay. So, so no promises that uh, 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 that they're going to absolutely immediately turn into a, you know, a, a big, you know, successful trader yet. Not yet, but they can start uh, using those things, and uh, awesome, you're going to benefit from that. <clears throat> no, you know, I agree with that wholeheartedly. You know, start. I find it always interesting when we when we listen to other people, uh, you know, talking about what they're doing, all kind of stuff. I find that there's always something that can add to your toolkit of of you know uh, your toolkit of how you trade. So, hey, if you're listening over on uh, the YouTube channel and or uh, anywhere. Uh, or even on StreamYard, please let us know what state you're dialing in or what your state you're watching from. And uh, let's go ahead and jump over into, you know, this poor guy. He doesn't know what's going on, but he knows he has a lot of red on the screen. And uh, so let's go ahead and see why he has red on the screen. There we go. And uh, as we slide into our review of the uh, spiders, the IWM, the Qs, and this kind of stuff. Uh, I want to go ahead and start with the spiders. You're really going to be, I think, shocked by how far, how fast this market is falling. Sh shifting back over to the charts and getting rid of my drawings. Let's go ahead and start up here with the spiders. And the other spiders are, yeah, there we go. Ever since, okay, a lot of times people don't realize, but topping, when a market tops, it is a process. Bottoms tend to be, uh, ten, bottoms tend to be uh, a, an event. In other words, uh, just very quick, you know, spike, you know, bottoms, that kind of stuff. But topping tends to be a uh, a process, and we can see a rounding process at the top, and then finally we let go. A couple of things to take away from this week's chart of the S and P. A couple of things to take away, away are check it out. The eight week eight day moving average is crossing below the fifty day moving average. So while that is not a death cross, it's at least a cousin to a death cross. When that happens after a huge sell-off like we've had now, it, it, it sets us up where I now have a lower low in place. And those moving averages turn into resistance rather than support. And so I would anticipate a move back up at some point, a move back up into the eight, in the, uh, eight or the 50-day moving average what happens right there will determine, uh, you know, how I want to trade this. If it stalls out right there, I'm going to be slipping over into the leverage ETFs, probably not on the spiders, but over on the Qs or, or the Russell to play it to the downside. Because how, what do these normally turn out to be? They turn out to be, looking over here on the weekly chart, these zigzag patterns, as we see here, and they usually go in, in stacks of three. So that's what I'm looking at uh, for the spiders. The other thing I'll be measuring is from this high to that low and then placing it up here for expecting a, a, a move of symmetry to move on down into there. 
Uh, and so that's going to put us, I think, down at about this level right here would be a symmetrical move on the spiders. So that's what we've got going on with the spiders. Let's jump over here to the Russell. And I'm saving, of course, the cues for last. We've also got some really great stocks to be taking a look at today, folks. And with the, you know, again, taking the move, this larger move on the Russell IWM as represents from the low back here in October of last year when we went on this big, huge rally. And, and then we've sold off and it is basically just, you know, hitting a 50% retracement. Now, this is the retracement based off of a symmetric move to that move right there. So the anticipated, if it, if it matches that move to the downside, that provides us a downside target on the Russell or on IWM down about 174, 175. As you can see, we're just now breaking below the 50% retracement of that move. And once and the, and the way these things stack up, uh, Anil, on the uh, Fibonacci's is once one level on a Fibonacci is broken, it, in, it increases the probability we're going to reach the next level. Now, it may bounce off that next level or it may slice on through. Right now, the price action on the Russell is slicing through all of the levels. With that said, though, note, we had a cross here of the eight and across in the 50. It is overdue for at least a, a snapback or relief rally. So it wouldn't be surprising to see this bounce back up uh, and move up. My momentum indicators that I have here, the market forecast and the TSI, are extended. However, they have not started to come, turn up yet. And one of the things that we like to watch is the, the clusters, the two line and the three line clusters on the market forecast. When that happens, normally within one to four trading periods, and these are dailies, one to four trading days, we get a reversal back to the, up to the upside, but it could be from a lower level. So Moving along to the next entity, which is the Qs. The Qs are very interesting. You know, it was the most powerful. The Russell, uh, the Nasdaq was the most powerful um, uh, index last year, and so far this year, it's getting a snot beat out of it. I mean, it really is. Notice what where it is going. We're breaking through the bottom of the fib 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 box. And it looks like it has a, a B, you know, a bead towards this uptrend line. And that may be where we get a bounce, but where would we expect the bounce to be? Again, a bounce back up into the moving averages. Note that this week's downside move is the biggest downside move we've had in well over a year. And, and it's breaking through a lot of the moving averages and the support there. So, Anil, that's what I've got on the uh, on the indexes. What's your what's your thoughts? What's your triple screen telling you? Triple screen has gone negative on all indices uh, on the daily triple screen. Okay. The weekly triple screen is still holding, but about to go bad. We'll see. Okay. And uh, as you can see, I just popped up the. Uh, market pulse off of the uh, from Investor Business Daily is saying that the current uh, outlook is up to and under pressure. Note that the exposure level that they suggest is no more than 20 to 40 percent uh, invested. Right now, my autopilot trading system has taken me out of all of my long bullish trades. I'm in a couple of uh, leveraged ETFs, and so I'm sitting at probably right around 17% invested right now. And we'll see where things go from there. And so this, this new addition on Investor Business Daily is working really well. I really like it where it says, hey, you know, if you're going to be invested, you know, this is the max that they, they you know, exposure they suggest. And um, so 
let's go ahead and jump on over to the next section, which is that uh, there's our PL from last year, as you can note. Um, April, I'm just like kind of treading water. I mean, I'm just treading water down just a little bit, but uh, still up for the year. And a couple of things of note as you look at this, the Russell has slipped back into you know negative territory for the year. Look at the NASDAQ, only 1.53% up for the year. And it, too, is almost ready to slip into negative territory uh, from its high from last year. So very pleased with that. But now, oh, I know you guys have been waiting for this. <laughs> now it's time for our question of the day, which is basically face-to-face. -face. And what's cool about our face-to-face -face question today is we're going to be asking the question, how do you pinpoint the winner's? when the market seems to be playing a losing game? Or in other words, how do you find good stocks when, when, uh, uh, when the market is, you know, strong stocks when the market's weak? So, Anil, I know you sent me that the, I can't, I can't, uh, okay, I cannot call up that screen. It doesn't let me do that, I'm sorry. Uh, I put it in the chat. I don't know whether it got in there or not. Okay. Well, I saw it in the in the private chat. I don't know if it's in the other chat or not. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, uh, I see. I put it in. Private so, so okay. I'll tell you what. I'll grab it. I will. I will basically. I will copy that and put it back in. Put it into the other chat. Okay. So everybody can. Everybody can see that. And so, if you want to talk to that, you know, how do you, how do you find great stocks when Things are not looking too hot. There yeah. you go. Everybody has it now. Okay. I was kind of surprised to see that. I see this, uh, saw this. I'm following Mike Webster. He was the formal, uh, formerly in MarketSmith, uh, portfolio manager and pretty well known. And so I just tried it. Today, and to my surprise, uh, about 80 stocks showed up. And just about every one of them are going up today. Ah, sure. Okay. So, so uh, if you have market surge, uh, this screen is worth looking into and then make your own decisions. But as you so, learn, Okay. So the code ahead. that you, the code you just, let me ask you just a quick. So that's a code that, that I just uploaded to everybody where they yeah, can. Yeah, that, that, that is the screen that you can set up in, in market surge. Okay. So that's one way. W what other ways do you have of, of finding good stocks in, you know, in bad market? You know, what are you looking for? I, I'm looking for stocks that are holding up in, in a bad market. So I'm looking for a three-month RS value. I'm also okay. looking for accumulation distribution not to break down. Uh, and uh, accumulation distribution is in market smith they are putting it as a based on past 13 weeks okay but they must be using some uh, weighted averages because the way nvidia went bad this week was pretty fast and yeah it, it changed from a b plus to b minus to c plus and today i think it's a d as a dog so because <laughs> it's is it turning into a dog <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question time will tell <laughs> yeah so you know what's really interesting about nvidia is did you know that last year it while it was doing its rocket ride last year it actually its accumulation distribution did uh, uh go to a d and and that's why it it got kicked off of all my primary list. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's awesome, Anil. And so, yeah. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. Basically, you know, when I look at it, you know, uh, you know, in, in my experience, and one of the things that IBD always tells you to do is to basically look for strong stocks that are holding up better, just like Anil said. So you can look at relative strength, 
Uh, you can all, you know, defensive sectors, you know, also there's a lot of times when there's a sector rotation rolling into uh, the defensive type stocks. And I'm not talking about defense stocks. I'm talking about things that hold up well, that basically are not your typical growth stocks. Uh, if you're a yield, you know, if you're a dividend kind of investor, you can look at things that have a, you know, four, five, six percent yield uh, to be investing in. That's another way. The um, And then, you know, look at the financial health, as Neil was saying. IBD does a really good job of keeping you up to date on what things are melting or what things are breaking with the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the index or not in the indexes, but in the stocks from a perspective of finance, you know, financial health. And so so then you can also, which is one of my things that I like to do is just use my technical analysis. And there's a couple of things I'm looking at is, you know, I want to be looking for a stock that is actually hanging out above its 200 day moving average. That's one. And I want the 50 day moving average to be above the 200 day moving average. That's number two. Uh, and then, um, uh, then I'll watch it from there. And, it would be nice to still have it in an uptrend or at least horizontal consolidation where it's not, the big thing is it's not selling off with the rest of the market. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so, and so Joe, uh, Joe, asked, Hey, trader Joe, how you doing? You ask a question. Is it too early for inverse ETFs? You know, Joe, we actually got into some in, inverse e, uh ETFs last, oh gosh, a, a, almost 10 days ago when this started melting down and uh, actually you know, picked up uh, TZA, which is the leverage ETF on the, in, uh, on the uh, Russell. And we also did the inverse ETF FAZ, as in Zebra, uh, or Zulu. Uh, we took picked up that on the... Uh, uh, for the financials, and both of them paid off very nicely for us, uh, uh, 10, 15, and 20% gains on those very quickly. So awesome. So let's go ahead and jump over into, we've got some cool stocks to be taking a look at, folks. So yeah, David, neither did I. Uh, that's on the, you know, our premium members, we, we had some orders out there for, uh, orders out there for SQQQ and DRIP. And if you're wondering what DRIP is, that is the inverse leverage ETF of XOP, which is the oil uh, exploration group. And yeah, we didn't get filled on that. But, you know, it gets back to that thing is, you know, we design, we, we identify where we want to buy at wholesale. And, you know, sometimes the market just doesn't match our, our price. So let's see what we've got going on here. So as the market trembles, even giants aren't spared. As we'll see here shortly. Uh, we're shuffling. A, a, a you know, we're having a major ma market shuffle. And one thing that's really interesting is the small cap or the market cap rankings are really starting to fall apart. Apple, Tesla uh, continues their descents and are actually falling out and becoming less a percentage of in, in indexes like the NASDAQ. So is this a forewarning of things to come? Uh, because, you know, Apple, Tesla, I, I don't think, you know, I don't think either one of them is going to completely disappear. Although, you know, if I were to vote, everybody vote. Um, and, and a thumbs up or a yes or a no. Is it more likely that Tesla will go to zero or Apple will go to zero. Go ahead and drop a note in, in the chat box to let me know which one you think is going to happen first. Apple go to zero or Tesla go to zero. So, hey, we're going to do a real quick rapid fire because we are basically have, have a bunch of stocks to be taking a look at. Uh, Anil, I'm going to jump in first uh, on... AVGO. Now, now I'm highlighting some stocks that IBD has come back and said, 
Of course, you got to be able to type it in there correctly. Hey, Warren, good to see you. Hey, Warren, check your email, buddy. I, I sent you some stuff a couple of weeks ago. Let me know if you got that, okay? Nope, you're not going to vote, Mike. <laughs> So, ABGO, okay, look at this, guy, folks. Had a nice run, but it is gap. It is dropping down. This big red candle right here on the weekly chart is, you know, as we like to say in California, it's no bueno. And, and uh, it is breaking down. So, we're below the 50. Every time we get below the 50, if we get the, you know, the quasi death cross of the eight crossing below the 50, this is probably going to zigzag its way down. Worst sell-off week in years. That's number one. Number two is, we already kind of talked about CMI, ARM. ARM had everybody fooled uh, this week. Looked like it was holding up really well in a horizontal flag. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> to the downside. Excuse the sound effects. Oh, I am so sorry. Okay, let's go. Let's step back. I promised myself I wasn't going to do that today. That's okay. We're on rapid fire here. So ABGO, again, huge sell-off for the week, largest sell-off for week, for, uh, you know, for years. Next up, ARM. Again, ARM was on my buy list. We bought some here. And then on Wednesday, it just went, see you later. And it fell from the sky like, you know what? <laughs> uh, those of you who don't know what that is, it, it fell from the sky like a turd from a tall cow. That's exactly what happened. And it still hasn't hit the ground yet. So look for that to drop a little bit further. Arm. And again, these are stocks that IBD has identified as being stocks with a comp rating of 99. So even if it has a, uh, a, a comp rating or a high uh, fundamental rating of 99, it's still possible for it to drop. Kava, Kava. Kava is looking... Kind of interesting. I might want to keep my eye on this one as we were identifying on Neil earlier that this is holding up well considering that the market is going to hell in a handbasket. Just breaking below the 50-day moving average today. Let's see what's in store for this. I and so this is holding up much better than the market. So Cava, maybe one that you want to put on your list. Texas Roadhouse. This is a eating establishment. Also holding it, and this would be one of those when they're talking about moving into defensive stocks. This may be one of those. Texas Roadhouse has done very well. <clears throat> talked about ABG Joe. So I've got four other stocks to talk about, Anil, but you, this is your baby. You're talking about NVIDIA? I'm, I'm talking about NVIDIA. Yeah, I already talked about it just a second, so I have not much to add except the accumulation distribution has dramatically fallen down uh, this week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that is quite remarkable. Cool. And so one yeah. of the things... So... so at what point would you consider, you know, what does NVIDIA have to do for you to consider buying it? For me, the accumulation distribution will have to reverse. Okay. Start, start, start reversing. What Is about the price action on the chart? Price action, in my opinion, will reverse itself. Uh, It'll reverse first, okay, and and then get confirmed with the change in accumulation distribution if the price reversal is really true. Okay, so one of the places that I'd be interested in Nvidia, or at least there, see, let me blow this up just a little bit. 
See this gap right here where it gapped up with earnings and then took off from there? Yeah. That gap right there is very, very strong. Let me show let me show it to you. It's basically from here back here up to there. So there's a support gap. We all know on gap ups like that from the top to the bottom with the middle section of the gap being the strongest level, that uh, that looks kind of interesting, uh, you know, potentially interesting there as a place, not to blindly place an order, but to uh, uh, get an alert to say, hey, it got down to your target, you know, target price, you know, you may you be you know get ready for a move to the upside because it's too is uh, it is it's uh, momentum is certainly over oversold, uh, but at the same time I always look back over here on the weekly chart and when the momentum has shifted to the downside, I want to see what it's done in the past. But Nvidia, like everything else, bigger biggest sell off on a weekly basis for in, in NVIDIA's case for years. What's the price where, Joe? Yep, there we go. The middle of the gap, guys, is, no, I don't want that. Yeah, I do want that, okay. The middle of the gap is, about uh, 718, 720. Cool. Okay, Anil. Now I'm going to rush through the rest of these go folks because there's some exciting things happening with our buddy Bitcoin. I will not flash up what's going on with Bitcoin, uh, but uh, we know that Bitcoin is going to have sometime between now and a couple of days from now. So what's going on with the the uh, uh, miners? There's a couple of miners that are on my radar. One is one is uh, Mara. This is Marathon. Uh, well, not Mara, not Mara Wealth. That's my buddy Mike. <laughs> Sorry, that was a free plug, Mike. Anyway, uh, Marathon. And as you can see, we just broke up above the eight-day moving average. So this could get a run. The anticipation is, is that the strong miners will survive and, and profit from the smaller miners fall, you know, basically going bankrupt and getting the heck out of there. So Mara is one of them, but I better than Mara, I like this one. Uh, and this one of our members of the uh, uh, autopilot trading community and over on our Discord channel. He brought this up earlier this week. Uh, he brought it up here on this day right here. And this is CLSK. It has a much better composite rating. It has a much better fundamental picture and actually a much better looking chart. And if we get this close above the eight week moving average, we have earnings coming up in a couple in the, on the eighth. But this could basically take a nice move back up into here. Even if it only ran halfway, you know, uh, now would I buy it right now? No, I wouldn't. But even if we take a, a fib and stretch it down here and it runs up to halfway, if it pulls back into the eight day moving average, I would jump on this and that would be about there to the 50, that's 17%. And if I retrace all the way back up to the top, that's about a 49% move. So, CLSK. Uh, again, this is a specialty trade for me because I recognize its fundamentals aren't quite as strong as what we normally get onto our, our, our watch list. So, Anil, what do you think? No, looks good to me. What uh, on C what's your triple screen telling you on CS CLSK? CLSK, CLSK I can tell you in a second. C L S K coming up. Triple screen weekly is intact, has not broken yet. And triple screen 
daily, it went into a cell mode, but looks like turning around. Okay. So, so this may be one of those where we could be looking at getting into it, possibly getting in early. And again, this isn't a, a, a recommendation uh, to buy, but it's just a really interesting pattern. And, uh, and it looks, looks really, you know, like a great pattern to be able to trade technically. So guys, if we've seen today, <laughs> the strongest stocks are being tested. They're kind of getting the heck beat out of them with the mark, current market downturn. It, uh, you know, we have not identified. And so it seems like we have a capitulation to the downside. And I won't say that the market is in free fall, but it is definitely showing some large red candles which means that we're getting an acceleration to the downside. And so, um, and, you know, the thing about it is, is when you're taking charge of that, you want to be keeping your eye on, of course, how do you track all that stuff? And so one of the ways we retrack things are, is on our um, autopilot trading journal. It's a fantastic way to track your trades, apply the, and apply the principles you learn every week. Uh, and um, I'll put the link for the journal over in the, um, uh, down in the description. And uh, this is a really great 160 pages with all my rules and also a great way to organize your trade. So that's what we've got. Let's say learn to be, learn to the value, the sophistication of simplicity. Uh, so let me ask you guys a real quick questions of everything that we talked about today. Uh, what's, you know, what takeaways do you have? What one thing you, will you go, aha, I can use that immediately. Just drop it a, a, in the chat box. Let us know what that is. And uh, Anil, I thank you for coming up with the suggested topic a day of how do you identify, you know, strong stocks in a weak market? Yeah, and those of you who have market search, uh, check out the screen. Uh, I was amazed when I just looked at it. Yeah, I and uh, it yet, but it looks terrific. And so, yeah, and I'm going to grab that. I hope I can look at this a little bit later and grab that. Uh, uh, grab that. Uh, well, I can. I can uh, let you send it to me in an email, and I will basically. Okay. Uh, if that works in that way, I'd like to share that with uh, with the group, with the group, and with the Bay Area Moneymaker group. Because yeah, I like what Mike Webster does also. Yeah, and plus he's a he's a good old rock and roll guy. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, so hey guys, whether you're navigating small caps or deciphering crypto conundrum, uh, Anil and I want to you know uh, Anil want to want to thank you for your valuable insight today and. Uh, Plugging in, I just look so forward to you know hearing you at the IBD meetup group. So, you know, don't forget like, share, make sure that you let other people know what we're doing. Oh, what do you want to know about CLSK, Joe? Yeah, Paul, I bet uh, we've been looking at that also. We're talking about that over on the Discord channel. I think you. I think you're you're over there on the Discord also. So, anyway, Anil, thank you so much, my friend, uh, and I'll just say thank you uh, for joining us today. Until next week. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, I said just thank you. This has been fun. Okay, thanks, Anil, and so uh, th again, thanks to everybody. Hey, until next week, trade smart, stay free. And aloha. God bless everybody. And for premium members, we'll see you in about seven or eight minutes. See ya. Anil, I got to. There we go. In the screen. And it is ending. Come on.